<laughs> All right, so walk us through the breaking of the San Antonio line. Well, uh, San Ant- uh, Santana arrives in San Antonio on uh, uh, February the 23rd, and uh, by the numbers, uh, he says, uh, you guys want to surrender? Uh, no, uh, which uh, Travis replies with the firing of the yeah. eighth, you know, yeah. I've, I've answered their man with the cannon shot, Bye. and our flag still flies proudly from the wall. So this is a, this is a heady moment. Yeah. So we are, no, we are not. Well, okay, uh, answer I expected. And he begins a very, by the book, Vauban siege. Vauban being the French uh, uh, military. Uh, so plant cannons, well, shell the place. Uh, uh, parallel, you yeah. know, parallels, get your, dig uh, uh, trenches. Yeah. And, and every night you're out there digging and working. And, and moving a little closer. And moving a little, and every day of the siege, Imagine these guys looking out, and the cannon have moved just a few yards closer to you. 10, 15 yards a night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, and it's by the numbers. That's, that's how you're supposed that's to do it. That's how you're supposed yeah. to do it. And by golly, that's how he did it. And again, give him high marks for that. Yeah. I mean, he, he, he knows these Mexican, well, especially the uh, the. Uh, uh, Zapadores, the, the engineers, they're very well trained. They know what they're doing, and that it's evidence of this, this siege. So could they have taken the place by siege? Why does he assault the Alamo? Well, you know, some of his own commanders ask that <laughs> same question. Uh, on the Friday night before the final assault on the Alamo on March 6th, he calls all of his officers together and announces... I mean, there's no debate. He says, we're going to assault the Alamo on, uh, on uh, Sunday, early Sunday. And some of his subordinate commanders said, well, Your, Your Excellency, we've, we've got a 12-pounder. A that's a very big cannon. Yeah, that's I mean, especially that's, for that place. Yeah, on the way. Uh, let's wait for it to get here. And once we blow down those walls, the the Texans will have no choice but to surrender. It can be a bloodless victory. Yeah. He says, no, I don't want to do that. Now, why? Well, what Peña, uh, Jose Enrique de la Peña One says, of his officers. One of his officers. It's one of his line officers. Yes, too, right? uh, who, who participates in the assault and is wounded. Yeah, he could shoot it. Yeah, sure. And he, he later uh, writes a narrative describing the campaign, and uh, he says that uh, he ordered this assault because without bloodshed there is no glory. Well, and I suspect there may have been a political motive, too. Uh, he wants a victory. Yeah, you know, and he needs to be able to triumph it back in Mexico City as he he's does. concentrating his he power. Does. Well, and this is something else we have to remember. He is absent from a very volatile situation <laughs> yeah. in Mexico. When it's dangerous to be absent, and he doesn't want to spend any more time in Texas than an, that is absolutely necessary because that could be a counter coup while he's up there. Yeah. So he that's on his mind. Okay, so the actual assault doesn't take all that long. No, uh, the assault begins in dark, uh, 5.30, uh, in, the, in the early morning gloom of, of Sunday, March 6. Uh, and, and you know, I, I'm a reenactor, and uh, we, we did an Alamo reenactment uh, down in Brackettville on the old John Wayne set. And at 5.30, uh, you know, we all ran to our post. I ran to my post on the north wall. And I looked over, expecting to see hordes of Mexicans down there. You know what I saw? Probably inky blackness. Nothing. Yeah. Not a thing. And I had one of those light bulb moments. Oh, that's why he attacked. Uh, because it really is dark. Wow. Uh, and uh, the plan is, and it's a good one, is for the centralist to be at the wall and over the wall before the Texians could rally. They're, they're trying to sneak up on them. Yeah. But 
as they are very quietly. Let's get as close to the wall as we can. Some nameless soldier, in, in a moment of excitement, in this very quiet sound, says, Viva Santana! Viva Republic of Mexico! <laughs> and people take up the, uh, the, the cry, you know, and, and, and then you've got all these people screaming in the dark and their officers are going, well, you guys shut up, we're trying to... <laughs> it's it's a, a buck mess. fever. Yeah, and yeah, it's exactly <laughs> what it is. But what happens? The guys in the Alamo who, who are asleep, they've yeah. got a few sentries posted, but again, they can't see yeah. out there, but they can hear them and they sound the alarm. And, 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 and now it becomes something very serious because now... The people run to their post, and the and, real shooting. And the real shooting takes begins. 45 minutes, if that. If that to overrun the place. Yeah. Just uh, too few defenders, too many attackers. Well, and it's it's uh, too much perimeter, too few riflemen. Yeah. Okay. So they overrun the place and essentially they collapse the outside defenses, well, push them back towards the chapel. Yeah, the, 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 the north wall falls. The southwest corner falls. The, you, you've got. Mexican soldiers coming into the compound from the north, from the southwest. Uh, the west wall crumbles, and uh, what happens then is the defenders run into the long barracks and the and the Alamo Church. Don't some of them get squeezed out, sort of like toothpaste? Uh, actually, they do, and uh, even though Texans don't like to talk about it, as many as uh, 75 wow. Alamo uh, uh, defenders, uh, and like you say, squeeze out uh, at uh, the the main gate and uh, That's what uh, makes you palisade uh, uh, the, the palisade yeah. and and they're they're running actually they're running for the Gonzales Road now again high marks to Santana because he anticipates this and he has placed his lancers out there and they kill every single one.